Okay, hi, uh, this is the lecture about Dan Buettner, Nutrition Hero number four. Dan Buettner is the author of the books called The Blue Zones. First came out in 2008. He was working with National Geographic. Um, they had noticed that there were certain populations in the world that had the most persons in their uh, 90s and 100s that were still physically fit and mentally sharp. So the question became, why are these populations so healthy? And Dan Buettner traveled around the world to study these populations. And these include the Seventh-day Adventists in Loma Linda, that's a uh, suburb of Los Angeles here in the United States. It includes the Okinawans in Japan, the Sardinians in Italy, and a few other populations like Costa Rica and Icaria. And, you know, when he first came out speaking, I heard him saying that all of these populations ate 95% or more plant-based. On a subsequent lecture, I heard him say, oh, it's only about 90% plant-based. It's at least 90% plant-based. Um, so uh, they all ate a lot of beans. That was one thing that they seemed to all have in common. Beans are, you know, great food, lots of uh, satiety, a lot of fiber, gives you prolonged satisfaction of hunger. Um, all of these populations are relatively isolated from urban centers or from Western civilization type, type things, which protects them from the SAD diet, standard American diet, which is full of processed food and meat and oil and very high caloric calories. It's not healthy. Um, the exception is Loma Linda because they're in a suburb of Los Angeles, but they're kind of socially isolated. They've got a policy. It's part of the religion to eat plant-based foods, to be a Seventh-day Adventist. And they also walk a lot. They have, you know, weekly events where they all walk a lot. So those are some of the things that seem to keep them healthier. Um, that's a big thing. They all walk a lot. You know, they weren't in a health club um, pumping iron or, you know, Stairmaster and that kind of stuff. They just walk a lot in their lives. You know, for example, I met a guy. I personally met an older guy from Okinawa, and that's what he told me. He said, lots of them, they don't have cars. They're just walking everywhere, so they get a lot of exercise. Um, they tend to have tight families, which helps them maintain a good social support system. That reminds me of Rosetto, Pennsylvania. I have another lecture somewhere on Rosetto Effect. The point of it being the Rosetto Effect was an Italian community, let's say through the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, where they kept tight families. So the grandparents living in the same house as the grandchildren, and the cousins are nearby next door or something. And the benefit of having that good social support, let's say a guy loses his job or he's sick, he just lives with his family, he's okay. Whereas if a person's by themselves living you know, in a house or an apartment in the city, they lose their job, they can't pay their bills, they're kind of screwed. So social support is very important. Lots of these older uh, centenarians lived with their daughters if they were the only living person from their generation. And you know, the woman in general tends to control the household, the guy's off doing stuff. So, you know, you're with the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, she might not let you live there, but if it's your own daughter, she'll probably let you live there. So the point made was having a daughter increases your chance of having a good social support system when you're older. Um, I've heard other guys tell me that too, personally, older guys. Um, next thing is they're pretty religious. Uh, I think religion makes a person more resilient. I know it does. There's a whole bunch of papers written about that. There's a guy by the name of Koenig who wrote an entire book about the better health of uh, religious persons. He was you know, doing a lot of research on that. Anyways, but the gist of it is, what I've seen is when, you know, they have a disappointment in their life, if, if you're like an atheist, you don't think life has any meaning, they're not as resilient, you know, because life goes up and down, you know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Okay, next thing, Sardinia. Um, Sardinia was especially interesting because the men had as many centenarians as the women, one-to-one -one centenarians, you know, people lived 100 years or more, in most other areas, the ratio of centenarians was four times as many women for men. So why was it that way in, in Sardinia? It seems like it was because the women tended to stay home all the time, just taking care of the house, where the guys were walking all day long. They were, quite often, they were farmers or shepherds, and so they were walking many miles all day, including up and down hills, so they're very physically fit. And then the question arises, well, why does exercise make a person so fit? And, you know, I don't know for sure, but there's multiple reasons. And I think one of the big ones is, when you exercise, you increase lymphatic flow about 10 to 30 fold. And so that clears out um, all your lymphatic fluid. The debris will accumulate in the extracellular matrix, the space between cells of all your tissues, all your organs. And it has to be cleared out through the lymphatic system. The particles of debris are too big to get back into the capillaries. So they have to be cleaned out through the lymphatics. 
and you need to keep moving to get that lymphatic uh, flowing, okay? 10 to 30 fold increase lymphatic flow with exercise. And I've also seen that in cancer patients. Some of the cancer patients who've gotten the best results. I take a look at Ruth Heidrich, incredible. You know, she recovered from metastatic breast cancer and a big part of her recovery process was, you know, she was exercising and working out a lot every day. I think that makes a big difference. Um, so the ability to clear out your lymphatics, it makes a person smarter if they exercise. Um, it increases BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic growth factor in the brain to stimulate the growth of neurons in the hippocampus. There is uh, formation of new neurons. That's called neurogenesis in the hippocampus. And, you know, how do you form a memory? You connect new information to something old that you know. You can't, you have to put it into perspective. So f being able to form new neurons increases your ability to learn new things. Um, also, when you exercise and you increase muscle stores of glycogen, you increase brain stores of glycogen as well. I mean, if you think about it, the brain's more devoted to movement than it is to, um, to thinking, actually. It's a surprise, but that is quite true. There's such a thing as Moravik's paradox. We'll talk about that in another lecture. Anyways, getting back to Okinawa, they've got lots of healthy centenarians. So they weren't just, you know, a lot of persons who survive in Western communities over 90 years of age are sort of survivors. You know, they got multiple terrible diseases, end-stage congestive heart failure and five, ten other problems. So they're, they're barely hanging on. Whereas what was especially unique about a lot of the Okinawan centenarians, they were totally healthy. American physicians went over there. There was a MD named Wilcox and his brother. They wrote a book about it, something like the Okinawa program or something like that. It was a good book. I read it. Um, and his brother, who was a PhD, to study the Okinawans with the Japanese physicians. Okinawa is like a, you know, an, an island, kind of like what Hawaii is the United States, uh, off the main part of Japan. And anyways, a lot of these people over 100 years of age, these centenarians, there was nothing wrong with them. You know, they didn't have all these problems. And, you know, they just die of old age eventually. So that's quite a good way to go through life in terms of health. Okay, um, some observations about Dan Buettner in the book. I like what I've seen in Dan Buettner. I think his books are good. They're very easy to read. They're simple. He's telling you the truth. He's not BSing you. You know, a lot of times you read some of these books about longevity, and there's tons of them. I read tons of them, okay? And a lot of times it's like they're a commercial for the Mediterranean diet. I don't believe in the Mediterranean diet. I think it's BS. I try to get people to eat meat. Try to get people to eat olive oil and fish and wine and cheese and all this stuff. I don't think those things are healthy, and I don't even know what the Mediterranean diet is. There's so many different places around the Mediterranean, so don't be tricked by that would be my perspective on it. Um, I think, you know, it's worth studying Dan Buettner. You know, I would recommend you read his book if you get a chance. You don't have to read his book, too, if you don't want to. Just maybe watch his videos because you can learn a lot from seeing all these persons who have made it to 90 or 100 years of age, many of them still in excellent condition. There's nice interviews of Dan Buettner with Chef AJ. There's nice interviews of uh, Dan Buettner with Dr. McDougall and other places. Um, so the Blue Zones is something worth knowing about. The reason it's called Blue Zones is on a map, they just circle them with blue ink, um, these areas. So that's how it got that name. And then they, you know, he had to decide to go travel there and study them in person. And he did. He went there and traveled and talked to these people in person. So he really know what he's talking about. Um, what is the longest lived population of humans? The longest lived average age for a population that I could find was a Seventh-day Adventist. This was in JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association. I forget the exact year it was published, something in the 1990s or something. Anyways, the longest lived were the Seventh-day Adventist vegans, and they had a lifespan of 89.6 years. And the uh, men had a lifespan, I think it was 86 or 87. It's pretty close to them, about three or four years less. And uh, Dr. McDougall, I heard him one time say that he had worked with a lot with the Seventh-day Adventists, and he felt a lot of these so-called vegans were not really as healthy as one would think. They had a lot of bad habits. The point being is, if a person has all good habits, they can probably live, you know, like 95 years on average. Uh, so it's good to aspire to that. Uh, so there's hope that one could make it to that age um, in, in good condition, be healthy and mentally sharp. So anyways, Dan Buettner... He's done a lot of great things. He's well worth studying. That's uh, Nutrition Hero number four. Um, hope that was helpful.